Good morning, it's 4.30, and I'm headed to meet with some of the people I love the most. Hey, this is Beth. We are here at the 2017 North Carolina Veterinary Technician Conference in beautiful North Carolina State University Vet School. This is Becky. She put on this entire conference. She's claiming to work a lot, but all Maybe I see is her standing her. around. Standing around waiting to introduce one of my most favorite speakers. Thank you. Hey, we gotta get started. My name is Diane Sprinkle. I'm a registered veterinary medical technician and I am from Hidnight, North Carolina. And how long have you been doing this? 30 years. 30 years? Yes. Wow, and you're still doing it. Yes. What's the secret to longevity um, in the profession? Having things outside of the profession that are different from working with animals that you can kind of get a release from. For example, I work small animals, but I keep my horses for my therapy, and I ride and I brush the horses, and you know, and I do other things: um, music, singing, cross stitching, things to release the tension. Slow down, enjoy your education more, um, live life more fully. Low pay. Low pay. Low pay. Um, for what we do and lack of respect for what we do. Making veterinarians recognize the value of a registered technician versus just pulling someone off of the street and training them to do our job um, or using assistance to do technicians' positions. Thank you. Oh. Um, how much you have to deal with clients? And that's just in general, like, a lot of people are like, I want to work with animals. And then they're like, oh, I have to work with people. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Rachel Kinzer. I live in Raleigh, North Carolina. I've been a, um, un in veterinary medicine for 13 years, a registered technician for seven years, and a VTS in emergency and critical care for a year. And I currently work at Veterinary Specialty Hospital. Um, I think right now compassion fatigue is one of my biggest things that I try to focus on quite a bit at our practice. Um, we have a lot of different areas that we're working on with this staff, both doctors and technicians, to kind of help combat compassion fatigue and make sure everybody has a good work-life balance. I think a lot of it, sometimes you um, confuse compassion fatigue with burnout, and so we like to try to determine which one is going on if it's because of one central case that's going in the hospital we're a specialty hospital so at times we have cases that have been in our hospital for two three weeks at a time that are very sick that are kind of ongoing cases that are very taxing on the technician staff especially that are in the ICU but the doctor staff as well that are helping these clients make decisions so, um, compassion fatigue I often see people who are coming to work day in and day out just frustrated like starting their shift already upset already worked up about something like they're they're rounded their first case and they're just over over it. Whereas in burnout, you usually see it kind of slowly creeping up, I feel like. Oftentimes we're seeing it um, where like there's one set case that kind of sets them off, but then otherwise they're fine with the rest of their day. And we like to talk to them about things that they can do um, to not focus on that one case and kind of move past that. Um, one thing that we've added to our practice is called um, uh, hobby club and every single month somebody at our practices teaches everybody else who wants to come a different hobby that they do personally at home that kind of gets their mind off of veterinary medicine and so each month they have the opportunity to come and learn from somebody else at our practice sometimes we bring other people in if we're not able to find somebody that month so it's one thing that we've added to our practice that's been kind of fun for us thank you Brittany Bryant uh, Central Carolina Community College and second year student Stephanie King CCCC, <laughs> second year student. I'm Heather Sinsley. I'm a second year student at Central Carolina Community College, and I'm from Pinehurst, North Carolina. Of course, you <laughs> can tell the Pinehurst. Oh, what? <laughs> I'm Devin Palazzolo. I'm from Grand Rapids, Michigan. What? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. It's Samantha Arnold from Winston Salem, North Carolina, and second year. Good. You can tell she's North Carolina. I'm Carly Mitchell from um, Apex, North Carolina and um, second year student. Not being able to utilize skills. A lot of veterinarians like to kind of take over and don't utilize their tax to full potential. I've noticed in some places. What about pay? Is pay an issue for you guys? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you feel like you're getting paid too much. No. no. Oh, no. I, wish. I wish that was the issue. So you think you're being paid too little? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Why do you Absolutely. think technicians are paid too little? 
Because they're not being utilized. If yeah. like we were yeah. being utilized, then they would see why the pay needs to be up more. It's not as recognized either. Yes. A lot of the places will hire a veterinary assistant off the street rather than to hire someone who went to school for two years and pay them higher. A lot of it like has to do with <laughs> teaching your clients, though, because a lot of clients don't understand how much, how much like things that you really need to do it. for your pet to take care of them appropriately because um, a lot of them like to go and get their own vaccines from the feed store mm -hmm. and they're not necessarily good but they don't know that so in order to get them to understand why they're paying okay $17 for this vaccine inform them hey we know that this was properly taken care of we know that it, it will be effective towards your animal 100% if not, we have the, the company that makes it back us up and they will help you. I'm in the appointment with him. He, I'm there, but he's more restraining while he's doing the exam, so to speak. So it's like, it's almost like, why even be there? Like, you don't feel utilized and it's hard to find that middle ground between using your technician and also um, being the veterinarian. Here at NC State, they utilize their technicians. The doctor will come in on the emergency, diagnose it, put all the medications in rack that they need. The technicians are the one that actually do everything after the doctor does that. Mm -hmm. And it actually makes you feel like you're worth being there because you're sitting here watching this animal that was pretty much dying when it came in actually come back to life by the time it goes home and you feel like you did your job. Whereas if you're standing around not really doing anything like taking blood, taking temperatures, mm -hmm. you feel like you're you're worth nothing because you're not doing anything to help this animal feel better. We do all the PE, um, everything up to the diagnosis. Right. And doctor comes in, does that, speaks to the owner, and we do everything else. Recovery, the anesthesia, we do. And does that improve everything. efficiency? Absolutely. Because yes. yes. we, we have assistants that we have those boundaries where you're an assistant, this is restraint and your duties, and then we have what we can do, and it just works smoothly. And Absolutely. Yeah, it saves time. Saves yeah. time is yeah. more clients to be seen yeah. in yeah. the day. And yeah. then you can have more clients because no one, everyone wants to come there because of their pet. Definitely bad. client education, showing, breaking down what they're paying for, showing them the blood work, and this is what all goes into it, or showing them what this vaccine is for. I literally yeah. just right. had my mother call me they gave her all this. I don't know what this right. any of this is for. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I it's love so it. rewarding. I mean, <laughs> I on the days where you it. don't feel like anyone cares, the animal always cares. <clears throat> yeah. Even though they can't tell you, they are always there for you. Even when the doctor's yeah. not, the reception's not, the practice manager's not, the animal always appreciates you because you're the person that's really? saving their lives this, along with the doctor. This is the best career if you want yeah. hands-on animal experience. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's you feel like you're ways. actually <laughs> saving a life yeah. and you're actually helping. You're, and you're, you're not just a vet. Owner owner be happy. You get to make their owner happy, you get to see the people be happy, and then also the animal wants a two-way street. Go into, that emergency, go into emergency on third shift <laughs> and it will be a great job. <laughs> It's a tough job. It's not for everybody, but for those select few who make it, I think it's a rewarding career. I couldn't be happier. I'm so happy that you guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>